Hi, this is to welcome you to History 1301, Section 21, United States History to 1876, an online undergraduate history course taught by me, Tom Cox, Associate Professor of History here at Sam Houston State University in Huntsville, Texas. Now this course is similar to other basic U.S. history survey courses taught at thousands of colleges and universities across the United States every semester. What makes this learning experience different, however, is that this course is entirely taught online, meaning that you will probably never meet me in person, but we will be spending an awful lot of time together over the course of the next few months learning American history primarily through the Sam Houston State University online website, which you can see here. Now, in over the course of this semester, we will be watching a series of videos, such as this one. We will be taking a series of quizzes and a series of exams uh, and reading from your textbook, all of which will be kind of combined together to give you an online learning experience. This video is to basically give you some broad themes of the course uh, and to cover the syllabus. And then future videos will actually discuss individual history lectures. Just to give you a little background about myself, I've been a history professor here at Sam Houston State University for going on eight years now. I'm a Louisiana native. I earned my undergraduate degree at Birmingham Southern College in Birmingham, Alabama, and I completed my PhD in American History at the State University of New York at Buffalo. My primary historical interests are in early American history, constitutional and legal history, and as you can see by the pagoda behind me, increasingly I'm interested in Asian history, in particular U.S.-Chinese relations. But my primary love, of course, remains early American and history, which is what we'll be spending most of our time talking about this semester. Now you may be asking yourself at this point, what is this class actually about? Well, fundamentally this course is a survey examination of American history. But when we talk about American history, or more specifically America, what do we mean? As this map, drawn in 1821, shows, America is, in many ways, a geographical place on a map. And here we can see the very, very young United States uh, before most states west of the Mississippi were settled. But is America simply a geographical location? As many of us were taught in high school history classes, the United States of America is a specific nation with its own borders, its own government, military, currency, laws, and culture. The United States of America was of course founded by 13 provinces or colonies of the British Empire who, in the 1770s and 1780s, banded together and fought a war for their independence. An independence which was finally recognized by the British Empire and the other major powers of Europe in 1783. In 1787, the same revolutionary generation which had fought the American Revolution created the United States Constitution, a framework for government which, with some modifications, is still the basic governmental structure we live with today. But is the United States just a political entity or a set of laws? Of course, when most of us think about the United States today, we primarily think about people. There are currently about 300 million Americans in the world today. On the eve of the American Revolution, there were about 4 million people, slave and free, Native American and white, living in the 13 British North American colonies, which would soon become the United States of America. And when we study the history of this young nation, it's important to remember that we aren't just studying the history of what some historians call dead white males. And by that, of course, I mean the usual cast of characters, George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and Benjamin Franklin. To be certain, these guys are important, really, really important to understanding our nation's history. But America has never been a country of just wealthy white men. Instead, in this class, we will be examining the lives of ordinary Americans. 
working class farmers, factory workers, sailors, nurses, housewives, children, African American slaves, Native Americans, recent immigrants from Europe. Because in many ways it's the collective stories of all these people which truly make up the United States of America. If you are a history buff like me, you may spend a fair amount of your time watching the History Channel. Now you may have noticed on the History Channel that oftentimes American history is talked about in very positive terms. We are oftentimes called a city on a hill, a light unto the nations, the most democratic nation in the world. And of course we are, at least for the moment, still indisputably the most militarily and economically powerful country in the world. But oftentimes our perception of ourselves is not quite what is historically accurate. And if you look at early American history, American history before the 20th century, when we were still a small, struggling nation trying to find its way in the world, in many ways, this is American history at its best. When Americans were still trying to work out things we take for granted today, like a government with a separation of powers and a system of checks and balances, or the idea that in an election the person with the most votes should win, but at the same time we should still respect the rights of minorities. A nation in which people are, at least in theory, judged by their abilities, by their willingness to work hard and play by the rules and get ahead, rather than who their parents were, or into which ethnic group they were born. Although we may take these things for granted today, the founding generation and the two or three generations which came afterwards were still trying to work out questions such as what is an American? Should equal rights be extended to minorities such as women and African Americans? And of course, most importantly, is America a country with a future? The history of the United States of America begins arguably on July 4th, 1776. But of course, as we know, there were people living on the land that would later become the United States for hundreds and thousands of years before the United States of America was ever created. For thousands of years, Native Americans created their own societies right here in North America. Before the United States was created, you had English and French and German and Dutch settlers, all of whom worked with or fought against Native American tribes for control of North America. And in many ways, it's the interactions between these early peoples that we'll be studying throughout this course. Today, we Americans like to brag that we live under the oldest, still continually operating constitution around in the world today. We also like to showcase our elections as examples of peaceful politics in which when one political party loses an election they peacefully hand over the reins of government to the incoming political party without a coup d'etat or a civil war. But it's also important to remember that in the 1860s the United States did fight a major civil war primarily over the issue of slavery. Slavery, of course, was nothing new in American history. Slavery had existed since uh, the Jamestown colony of the early 1600s, but by the 1840s and 1850s, a growing abolition movement in the North, a intensifying pro-slavery movement in the South, and the unwillingness of Northerners and Southerners, blacks and whites throughout the United States, to compromise over the slavery issue led to the American Civil War. From 1861 to 1865, Americans fought the Civil War, a bloody conflict in which over 600,000 soldiers and civilians were killed. More casualties, in fact, than American losses in World War I and World War II combined. Out of the Civil War, Phoenix-like, the modern United States would emerge. But understanding how America evolved from 13 small colonies on the periphery, the edge of the British Empire, into a modern nation-state, 
and how the United States emerged from many different cultures into one culture will be the primary themes that we explore this semester. Now that we've laid out the broad themes of the course, I want to turn to a brief discussion of the course syllabus. If you will go to the website for this course on SHSU Online, notice on the left side of your screen a button called Course Home. Just click it and a small submenu should appear. The first two buttons on the submenu, Syllabus and Course Schedule, will be what we talk about next. Now, go ahead and click on the Syllabus button if you haven't already done so, and you will see a standard, straightforward syllabus for this course. We've already kind of discussed the course description, so if you scroll down and look at the course objectives, you'll see that throughout the semester, what our goals are to do is primarily to enhance your knowledge of early American political, social, economic, and cultural history. And we'll also work a bit on sharpening your ability to critically discuss, think, and write about historical issues. Although I imagine critical thinking is already pr probably pretty common to most of you. As far as readings go, we have only one textbook for this course, David Goldfield's The American Journey, Volume 1. I prefer that you use the concise edition, however any edition of Goldfield's American Journey Volume 1 is acceptable. If you can find a Kindle or an iBook copy uh, from a website like Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com, if you can get a good used secondhand copy from a website, that's great. But either way, you need to have some version of this textbook ready to go by the first day of class, Wednesday, August 29th. Class format. This is an online course that differs in many ways from a traditional American history survey class. Although you have a lot of flexibility in uh, how you listen to your lectures and when you work on your uh, quizzes and exams, you also must make certain to turn in your assignments by the required deadlines. And I will have to work diligently to return your quizzes and exams to you in a timely manner. These classes are flexible, but they do require us both to exercise more discipline. Uh, now, as far as the grading goes, your final grade for this course will be based on 13 out of 16 weekly multiple choice quizzes based upon the assigned readings. And you will also have four exams throughout the semester based upon the assigned readings and the podcasted lectures. You'll essentially have one quiz a week. I will post the quizzes late on Friday afternoon. You will have each weekend through uh, midnight on each Sunday to complete and return these quizzes to me. Uh, once again, these quizzes are just 10 questions, multiple choice weekly, which you, mu which you must complete. I drop the three lowest quiz grades at the end of the semester, so essentially you can miss three quizzes uh, with, with no problem and it won't come out of your grade, although you still must take all four exams. All right, now let's move to a discussion of other topics on the syllabus like academic honesty and visitors in the classroom. Now these next few sections of the syllabus basically contain a bunch of legalese which will probably never apply to you in this course, but it's an important series of topics that we need to briefly talk about. Under the section labeled academic honesty, basically what this means is don't cheat. Don't cheat, don't plagiarize, don't share test answers with a friend, and if you have to miss an assignment, please make sure it's for a documentable reason, not just because you're trying to get out of doing work. Bottom line, play it straight by me, I will play it straight by you. Keeping on top of assignments, that should be fairly self-explanatory. Americans with Disabilities Act, what this basically means is that if you are a student with special needs or you have some sort of medical condition, uh, please let me know as soon as possible. The same for religious holidays. If you are a member of a practicing faith and you have a religious holiday the same day that one of our tests is due, please let me know and I'll work with you on that. Moving on to the last section of the syllabus. As far as visitors in the classroom go, as this is an online classroom, this uh, portion of the syllabus really doesn't apply to us. Instructor evaluations, you will have a chance towards the end of the semester to uh, evaluate me and this course and how I run this course. You will receive an online form to fill out, more information on that later. 
assignments we've already talked about, use of electronic devices in the classroom. Well, once again, this is an online classroom, so the only electric devices you need are a computer or laptop or iPad capable of accessing the website and the course documents. So that pretty much fulfills the syllabus requirements. Um, let's turn to a brief discussion of the class schedule and then we'll be done. To access the course schedule for this course, look at the main menu to the left of your computer screen and particularly the course home button and the little submenu which appears beneath the course home button when you, uh, when you click on it. The second uh, item on the submenu should be called class schedule right below syllabus. Just click on that and you should see an, uh, a copy of this table. This table basically gives you a week by week breakdown for how the course will develop including lecture topics and uh, reading assignments. If you follow this table and the uh, week buttons, week one, week two, week three, etc. to your left, um, you can click on them uh, every Monday after uh, the previous week's lessons are over and it will provide you with instructions for your upcoming quizzes and exams with uh, podcasted lectures and other advice to guide you through the semester. I will be expanding upon these uh, week one, week two, week three buttons as the course unfolds, but this is just to kind of get you set for the beginning of the semester. All right, I will see you again on Wednesday, uh, August 29th, the first day of class, when we will begin our first formal lecture. Good to be working with you and see you then.